Hey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. At first I wanted to thank Reddit for the comments, the hits and the push in the right direction. I decided to uh, do my videos about more basic stuff for beginners uh, like obviously uh, breadboards. I worked on this breadboard to the max over the past week and I figured that most beginners who use breadboard <coughs> circuits don't even know how the innards of this thing look and what are the pitfalls and uh, what to consider when using a breadboard. So uh, what I'm gonna do today is take apart a breadboard, show you the innards, show you how it works, how everything is connected inside and what to consider if you build circuits on them. So here now you have it. I just took a smaller breadboard and um, screwed off the back plate. It was just fixed down with some standard, standard screws in there. And I, all I had to do to show you the clips, the metal clips, is to peel back this standard double-sided foam tape they used. They even <laughs> didn't bother to take off this protective cover. So now you see here how um, the row connectors look in there and the power rails that go up and down there. Uh, one thing <coughs> I didn't know at first when using those uh, because it's not marked obviously on the front side is that there is a little gap in between here so the top of uh, the breadboard power connector is not connected all the way through to the bottom. Uh, the clip just ends here in the middle. I guess they just don't produce any longer clips. Um, that's something you have to remember because if you build a larger circuit and the top is powered up and you don't connect these over um, you won't have any power on the lower side of the board and don't know why. So let me just take out one of these clips. Whoop. They don't sit in there too tight. So it's just a piece of bent springy metal there, separated. Let me zoom on in, in on that a little bit. I hope you can see it properly now. Just turn this around. So if you connect something in there, uh, your pin from the component just goes in between those metal springs. The force applied is not too great, so you have some contact resistance in there, so passing through a lot of current just isn't possible because it will heat up and raise the contact resistance even more. That's one thing to look out, so no power circuits on this. And because these uh, metal tabs are so close together, there is capacitive coupling all over the place, so above a certain frequency you cannot use those anymore because you get a capacitive coupling from one pin to the other and you just got your signals messed up all over the place so for low power low frequency stuff this is just fine and anything above you should use a proper PCB and solder stuff in place. When using high frequency uh, like radio frequency circuits uh, you should even um, consider some other prototyping methods like um, dead bug or something like that to keep the uh, leads of your components really short. Another thing um, to consider with these breadboards is that uh, those spring contacts will wear out over time. So if you use uh, the same places in your breadboard over and over again, you'll wear them out and you get really bad contacts or even uh, issues with no contacts at all. So uh, troubleshooting on one of these can be really a pain. That's something to keep in mind. Okay, 
I hope you liked this video. If you did, please uh, subscribe, rate and comment. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Goodbye.